Welcome to GVTV. I'm Amy Anderson, and with me today is English major Casey Barrow. She is here with us to speak about the different ministry opportunities here on campus. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. First of all, I want to know uh, the different opportunities here on campus that the students can get involved with. Well, there are three different ministry groups on campus. There is the Campus Crusades for Christ, there are a campus fellowship group actually, and then there's the campus ministry team which is um, sponsored by the college and has the two campus pastors in, within it. So that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Which one um, are, do you participate in? I'm a part of the campus ministry team for the campus with the campus pastor. And what do you guys do with the campus ministries? Oh my goodness, we are involved in so many things right now, Amy, it is so exciting. First of all, on Sundays at 5, we have the question, which is student-led Bible study. It's more about wrestling with tough questions in life, too. It's not necessarily pick a passage and, you know, dissect it. So that's really nice. It can be really casual. And once a week with that, we actually cook a home-cooked meal over in Lutheran Royal Church in the basement. So that's really nice, too. Get away from campus food for a night. Not that it's bad. Um, also, we, on Tuesday nights, we have student-led worship, and it's called The Noise. And that is at 8 o'clock every Tuesday evening over in Bud's Place in the basement of Nielsen. And we usually have a guest speaker. I always bring treats. So you will eat no matter what you do on campus at team, which is always good. And, um, and once a month we started having a Tizay service, which is um, silent prayer and meditation time. It's in the dark with candles, so it's really relaxing. That's really nice to have. Um, as far as special events on oh, we have chapel on Tuesday mornings. I forgot to mention that at 11, okay. which is always great. And who leads that? Um, it's different speakers. Once again, we like to change it up a little. Okay. Um, the campus pastors switch off and on if we don't have a special speaker, though. It's always a good message. It's nice short in the middle of the day, you know, mm -hmm. kind of get your little meditation time in there. Mm -hmm. um, also, we are having, we are helping sponsor a Story Hill concert. They're a, um, kind of a folk band. And that is going to be on October 16th at 7.30. The tickets are going to be reduced price tickets if you come to the noise before the event. So that's exciting. Uh, we also, we recently had Peace Week. I don't know if you were aware of that or mm -hmm. that? Yes. Um, which was a great hit. And, and there was like different meditation, things that you could do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. all right, I'm on the right track. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course you are. Um, and then we made peace pinwheels on the Thursday and then had them displayed on Friday over in the new Peace Garden, which was the Zen Garden by Jensen. And we moved the Peace Pole over there, too, which used to be by Holy Grounds. Mm -hmm. So that was great. And then um, coming up Sunday, October 14th, we have Hunger Week. We're trying to raise awareness about hunger in the United States and around the world. There's no reason that everyone on the earth shouldn't be eating. We have plenty of food, but it's not happening. So on the Sunday for the question, we're going to have a guest speaker. But more exciting than that, I think, you know, 1 p.m. on that Sunday, we're having the Hunger Hike, which we're going to take part in. It's a, it's a longer walk. It's around Des Moines. Uh, stay tuned for information on that. Also, um, Tuesday, we're having a guest at chapel to speak about hunger. Wednesday, we don't have anything planned yet. Thursday is World Food Prize Day, so we're going to have 11 a.m. fall convocation. Classes will be canceled at that time. Um, we're going to have a really important guest speaker for that. Uh, 12.30, we're going to serve a meal at a local shelter, which anyone can get involved with. And we're going to have a zombie walk that night at 6 p.m. Does that sound scary? <laughs> what do you do? Like, what's that consist of? It is actually kind of a way to protest peacefully, but it's also kind of performance art. So. We all get dressed up like zombies after having raised canned food, and then we kind of death zombie walk to um, the, where the canned food drive ends, and then we donate all our food. And it's kind of, you know, people will take pictures, people will take notice, and then, you know, you can tell them about the cause. So it's a nice way to kind of peacefully protest, you know, nice. hunger. So that'll be fun. Um, then Friday, October 19th, we don't have anything planned yet, but Hunger Week is going to be a blast. Now, who comes up with these ideas? Is it the students or? Um... Well, we have meetings once a week. The campus ministry team does, and we get together with the two campus pastors, and basically we just bounce ideas off each other until we kind of something sparks with us. So it's basically student run. Um, these are all ideas put forth by us, so it's really exciting. Now, the students who are interested in coming to uh, campus ministries or helping out with Hunger Week or coming to one of the events during Hunger Week, who do they need to contact? You, it'd be great if you would contact either one of the campus pastors, and they are Leanne Stubbs and Jack Mithelman, and they're both on campus here every day, um, or Josh Ritterneck. 
he is actually our student campus ministry team leader, um, and he they all have GBC emails. Okay, perfect. Now for the summer and also spring break, are you guys oh, planning anything uh, exciting for those uh, times, or what's going on for that? Definitely, I almost forgot. <laughs> um, for the um, fall break, which is a whole one day, um, we're going to, act, okay, let me intro that with saying that there is nowhere for homeless families to go in, in the Des Moines area. So if a mother was homeless and she had children, the shelters currently would only let her in rather than her children and her, the rest of her family. And we just noticed, you know, that's kind of sad. So we're actually on that Friday morning through Friday evening and Saturday, we're going to um, renovate and repair a homeless shelter in town, paint it, I mean, really make it look nice to have a family shelter in Des Moines because it's very important when it's going to get cold, it's going to be the holiday seasons. Um, so I really think that's going to be a great event. And anyone is invited to get involved with that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Last question for you. Why do you like being a part of campus ministries? What does it do for you? Mm -hmm. um, my freshman year here on campus, I didn't really get involved with much because, you know, it's the whole freshman adjustment. So I was kind of scared still. But after I actually met Pastor Leanne one day passing on the street, we were just having casual conversation. She's like, you know, I'm the campus pastor. Don't, and I was just like, oh, campus pastor makes you feel kind of, you know, like, oh, should I talk to them? What do I say? But they're such down to earth, wonderful people, Pastor Jack and Pastor Leanne. And um, I sort of kind of met the people that were in it. And then I went to the noise and some of the events and just kind of, it just melted my heart to know that people care this much on this campus. And all, the, all three of the campus ministry groups really care about the people on this campus and I invite everyone to get involved because it just makes you, it makes your campus experience so much, you know, more rich and full. I just feel better as a person. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really rewarding. Well, thank you so much for coming out here today thank and you. speaking about the campus ministries and trying to get involved. That's, there's so many opportunities that mm -hmm. we have no idea about. So I really exactly. appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that's it for GVTV. I'm Amy Anderson. Hi, I'm Kevin Cooney, and you're watching GVTV. Hey, everybody. This is Grandview Television, and I'm Ryan Cosgrove for your show, The Best Darn Dating Show Ever. Um, with me, I have Chelsea Smith representing the ladies, and I have Daniel Bellman representing all of the guys out there. So what we're going to do today is just ask some questions. These two are going to talk about them, and we're going to get to the answer about dating. So um, our first question for both of you are, um, what are some misconceptions? the other sex has about dating. So why don't you take it first, Dan? Um, well, for a guy's point of view, what a girl really wants in a, in a date is uh, she always wants a nice romantic dinner or, you know, someone with a big fat wallet to pay for a nice <laughs> meal. But uh, and then, you know, you walk them home and then nothing after that kind of irritates the guy, you know. Okay. So as a recap, and you can <laughs> and you can counter. So first of all, a nice, probably expensive, right? Yeah, yeah I would nice. have to say expensive. Well, nice, expensive. nice fancy kind of. Obviously, every girl wants a nice, expensive dinner. I mean, if you want to show her that you care about her and that you respect her, then you need to spend money on her. You're not going to take her to some like cheap place, you know. You want to like show her. Mm. Like with money that you care. There's nothing wrong with like the Winchester or something. Well, I don't know, but all I know is that you don't just want to like make her think that you're trying to have sex with her. So. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, I, I, that I don't know. If, if I'm paying for a nice expensive dinner, I'd rather get something out of this deal. No, that's not right at all. It's not how it should be. You should take her out for dinner, and then you should take her home instead of back to your place because girls don't want to do that on the first date or at all and that's all guys expect not all women okay well most women for the most part okay um mm. i don't know can we is there any reconciliation between the two or is it you, neither one of you going to back down from your point well, I can see yeah, how if a guy's going to spend money on me, he's going to expect like something or a turn, but it doesn't have to be like what they all expect, you know, maybe. I don't know. I guess that, you know, you can kind of have a little leeway in there and kind of help out. Okay. Have nice dinner, a lot of some things, <laughs> but, you know, I'd say after the first, or after the first few days, I'd be hoping for something. 
Yeah, maybe. Depending on the girl. Depending on the girl. Not me. Depends on how much you woo them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, our next question is um, pickup lines. So, what are some of the best pickup lines? So, how about we start with you this time? Pickup lines. Pick line that you have. First of all, I would never use a pickup line because I expect the guy to pick me up. But I don't want him to be using any cheesy lines, you know, all those stupid pickup lines that just guys try and use. Those don't work. Girls want something genuine, not a pickup line, because anybody can think of those. You want to say something that's honest if you're trying to pick up a girl. But I would never use a pickup line. Only guys use those. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's many angles you can use for this. You can either just, if there's a dance club, just swoop in there and just start <laughs> dancing with them. Mm -hmm. That's it. That, you know, well, that not, you're not saying anything, but it's okay. still kind of a pickup line. Um, buy them a drink. You know, there are some a lot of corny ones out there, but you know, I personally wouldn't say them. <laughs> you know, there's a few like, oh, let's see. Did it hurt? Did what hurt when you fell from heaven? Mm. You know. <laughs> Yes. Now, what, what would a guy say, or what would a girl say to that, you know? It's just way too cheesy, and it's not personal. Something that you could say to any girl, so the girl doesn't feel like you're actually saying it to her. You know? Like, you got to do something that's genuine to her. You can't just use, like, a dumb You don't even know this line. person, though. You, know, you so, know exactly what to say to them. Then a guy shouldn't be just, like, walking up to you if you don't even know them. Well, a lot so, of it has to do with confidence, too. I don't know. Pick up lines. So how would you respond if you got a pickup line? I'd probably walk away, depending on what it was. If it was something stupid, like something you just said, then I'd walk away. So basically, you're saying you every time a, drink, a guy I came up to you, <laughs> came up to you, asked you something, or bought you a drink, you just walk away. No, I, I said if you bought me a drink, I would stay. But if you're like, oh, did you fall from heaven? Then I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> so pickup lines don't work. Okay. Um, I'm living proof of that. Hands <laughs> proof. Um, our next question is, what is the ideal first date? So let's let you take this. <laughs> well, that kind of goes back to the first question. Sure. Um, for an ideal first date, for probably a typical guy, would probably go, oh, I would say to a, an okay dinner. No, not a cheap, I'll say not a cheap one. But heck no, not an expensive one. Right. Uh, and then maybe go to a movie. And then probably, if not, if they're old enough, go get some drinks. <laughs> and then from then on, you don't know what happens. <laughs> no. Anything can happen. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I'm a girl, so obviously girls like romantic. They want something that the guy becomes creative and thinks of it himself. So maybe like out to dinner, maybe like on a walk, like at a lake or something romantic, you know, like that. Not just like the usual movie and then back to their place, because that's annoying, because that's what every guy wants, is for you to go back to their place. Well, of so course. it's like, just do something creative you know, instead of original. So would it be like creative if when you went back to their place it was decorated? There yeah, was that, that'd be nice. Something just original instead of just the usual, let's go to a movie and then you come over. It's so annoying. So you'd come over if my place was decorated? Depends what you mean by decorated, I guess. Well, you said if it's decorated. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more I'd likely be creative. to I'd be creative. Okay, I'm being creative. Yeah, I'd be more likely place. to, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> Um, our next question is um, for Dan, describe the perfect woman. Chelsea, describe the perfect man. So why don't you start with the perfect Ooh. man? Are we talking about just looks or characteristics? How about in general, the total package? In general. Okay, well, first of all, he has to be tall because all girls like tall guys so they can wear their heels and the guy's still going to be taller than them. <laughs> They want dark hair, muscular, athletic, you know, all those good things. Um, good smile. As far as characteristics, just someone who isn't like every other guy who wants to take you home and whatever. Just someone that treats you with respect and 
cares about you and wants to get to know you, like asking you questions and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So what's the perfect woman, Dan? Well, well for what she said, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> There's no man like that. But perfect woman? Ah, uh, let's see, I'd have to say nice nice small frame. Not too skinny, but a little meat on her. Okay. Um nice, nice stomach. Nice caboose. Uh, you know, I think every guy, you know, a little, a little more up there. Sure. You know, it's a little nice. Uh, some people prefer more. People prefer blondes. I personally prefer the brunette. Okay. But uh, that's your opinion on that one. So that's your preference. I'd have to say that nice, nice, uh, outgoing attitude. Not uh, stuck up. That's a real big turnoff. Okay. Uh, I just say someone that wants to have fun. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. All right. So we have the perfect um, male and female. So keep your eyes out for them. Um, and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the best darn dating show ever. Now we're to the demonstration segment of the show. What we're going to do is have Dan explain <clears throat> how he would uh, try to get Chelsea's number, and then um, afterward she'll critique and say how it worked, what didn't work. So go ahead. All right. Well, first of all, I'll kind of explain what I'm going to do because it would uh, take a little longer than what I'm going to, how long I've got to do it. So uh, first, I would just come up introduce myself, hopefully she would give me her name, uh, and then I would uh, start a conversation, ask her who she is, what she does, where she goes to school, stuff like that, um, see what we have in common, and then from there, a little long, a little while, then I'll slip in the question of uh, asking her what her, what her number is or give her what mine is. It's pretty much usually what I do is I just give her my number and then see where she goes from there. So I'll actually demonstrate it a little bit right now. Um, hi, my name is Dan. Hi, I'm Chelsea. Nice uh, to meet you. you from around here? Yeah, I'm from Des Moines, actually. I go to Grandview. Do you? Yep. I do, too. Really? That's, that's weird. I never see you there. Never seen you either. Wow, that's too bad. But maybe I'll try to look around for you. Um, tell me a little about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Um, I work at a gym part-time and just go to school. That's cool. Um, from then on, I would uh, actually converse a little bit longer and then uh, I would probably see, see what the situation is. I'd give her my number and then maybe 
maybe if I really didn't have to go, or if I did have to go, I'd tell her, oh, I've got to, my ride's leaving, I've got to get going, and see if she gives me her number at, right after that. All right, so um, <clears throat> Chelsea, how would that have worked? I think it actually would have worked pretty well. Um, I liked how he said, you know, I'll give you my number because that's, that's safer for a girl because she knows that she's not going to get harassed by the guy if she gives out her number and then that leaves her the option to call him. Um, I liked how he started a conversation like asking personal questions about me instead of just coming up to me and like abruptly, you know, asking for my number with some pickup line or something. Um, so yeah, I, I probably would have given it to him. Well, there you go. So mm -hmm. Dan, good job. Um, Thanks both of you for your help. Um, that's all we have for GVTV and the best darn dating show ever. Grandview has many exciting events around campus. Here is one of our very own GVTV reporters. The mood was tense. The stomachs were empty. The fans were out of control. The food was hot dogs. Get set! Go! <laughs> Nick Roberts, Emma Shields, Reggie Hoy, and Dottie Vanderhyde sat down in the student center to try and win some money by shoveling as many hot dogs into their mouths as they could. The contestants were given seven minutes to feast. They had to eat bun and dog to count as a full hot dog. Yes, you can eat na -na -na -na, eat na -na -na -na. Reggie took the lead early in the contest and was able to hold it the entire way through. Dottie had a very loud and proud cheering section, which earned her some extra points but it wasn't good enough. Although Nick ate fewer dogs than everybody else, he said he enjoyed his food because he had mustard to go with his dogs. Emma earned herself a second place finish by eating six and a half dogs, which also gives her the women's record. Reggie won the contest and broke his own previous record of nine dogs by this year mowing down on 10. For GVTV, I'm Tyler Irving. One, two, three, four.
One of our GVTV reporters took a look at some interesting things that are happening around campus. Thanks for watching GVTV. I'm Amy Anderson, and make sure to tune in next week.